What's going on? You locked in with the Innovators YouTube. You already know I got the best interviews right here, man. I got my guy, Shuggy Bo, in the studio today. What's popping? How you doing? I'm doing good. Feeling blessed to be up in L.A. You know, I ain't never stepped foot out here. What does it feel like? How was the drive? Appreciate you drive, taking the drive to come out here. You know, for sure. You you know, if you want to you wanna progress with your music, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, the trip out here, I ain't going to lie, it was pretty long, but... It was worth it, though. <laughs> I got to see hella scenery, you know, all that good stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, just to get into it, let the people know where you're from, where they find you on social media. Yeah, my name is Shuggy Bo from North Sacramento, North Highlands to be exact. You trying to find me on Instagram. It's glocksteppin underscore Shuggy Bo 64. G-L-O-C-C underscore steppin, S-T-E-P-P-I-N 64. Just to uh, get into it, like, how did you grow up? Was your parents around? What was that like for you? Um, originally, I'm from Hawaii. I was um, what? Yeah, I was born in Hawaii. I lived in Waiwa in uh, Waikiki in Honolulu. So I had both of my parents at, for a certain amount of time. Uh, my dad ended up going to prison, so it was me and my mom for a minute. But he ended up getting back out. But um, it was kind of a rocky little household. Like it was on and off. Like why? Like how? Hawaii? How, like how did that happen? That that <laughs> that kind of came out of nowhere for me. Yeah, <laughs> that you, because you know, don't nobody expect that because I'm a with jazz, yeah. but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that came about because my mom, she's from Sacramento. Uh, my mom and dad is from Sacramento. She was from Oak Park. My dad is from uh Twenty Ninth Street. Gotcha. Um, my mom left to Hawaii when she was like fifteen, and she never came back. So. When she had me, she was out there. Um, we stayed out there till I was like nine, ten, and then uh, my dad was on the run from the boys in Hawaii. So um, what the? F yeah, my my dad. You feel me? I mean, I ain't finna. You feel me? But yeah. he was doing some. <laughs> so <laughs> I got you. I got you. Yeah. So um, we had to go. Um, my dad took me to Sac to uh, Cali, and um, I was living here with him for a minute, and then I had to wait for my mom and my brothers to move out here, and then I've been out here ever since. Yeah. Um, for you, like, uh, you know, Sacramento, from what I've seen over the years, it has its good sides, it has its bad sides, you feel me? Yeah. And um, some people get into the bad side, some people get into the good side. What was, what was it for you, though? <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Um, I had to adapt to it because, you feel me, I didn't have to worry about none of, like, no bullshit when I was in Hawaii. But coming to SAC, like, it kind of toughened my ass up. And my mom don't play that. Like, the first time I ever turned down a fade, I got my ass whooped. And I, you feel me? I didn't yeah. know nothing about fighting because I didn't have to deal with that. Yeah. But I got my ass whooped. So it's like, ever since I got my ass whooped for not fighting, bro, like, I ain't gonna lie. It's, <laughs> it's just programs. Like, yeah. I'm getting down with it. Like, yeah. no yes or no about it. Was that like a... Coming from Hawaii and like coming to SAC, was that like a huge adjustment? I'm sure it was. Yeah, it was because you feel me? Hawaii is like a peaceful place. It's like it's a beautiful place. You don't got to like really worry about like bullshit. Like you got to worry about in Sacramento. Me coming to SAC, my mom, I guess my mom was just trying to like get me ready for it, I guess, because she's from SAC, so she knows what's up already. Yeah. No, nah, definitely. That, uh, what is it like for you now? Like, uh, is that somewhere you still would like to live? Do you want to move out of there? Like, what, what is what is that <laughs> like? Uh, I love Sacramento, <laughs> Shelly. <laughs> the first chance I got, I left. <laughs> for real? Yeah, but um, why? Because like um, being an upcoming artist, if you know, I know you um, been seeing like stories about rappers of being upcoming artists in Sacramento. This is haters, bro. And with me, uh, you feel me? respect me but they don't like me <laughs> so it's like <laughs> you know like being out there people will be haters they'll just like how they did to brisk they'll they'll take your shine from you real quick yeah. they don't care about none of that bro it's it's just not good to be out there like that why do you feel that people don't like you um because i stand on business a lot i may go a little far sometimes but when it comes to standing on business that's what i do and a lot of people don't like me because of what I've done to somebody else that they was close to. Yeah. Um, people don't really be having a reason not to like me. You know, they just, like, ride the boat. They get if the boat. you don't like you, then I ain't going to like you either. Yeah, that type of shit. They really don't got no type of beef with me. They just doing what everybody else is doing. But yeah. 
This ain't gonna say nothing to me though. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> what is it? First, let me say, what got you into making music and like how did that happen for you? Um, I ain't gonna lie, when I was like seven or eight, I was um I didn't even start rapping, I was singing. Like I know how to uh sing for real. And no I'm not about to hit no high note. <laughs> but yeah, I was singing for real. Me and my mom used to drive around in the car and I used to like really hit notes and she used to tell me, Um, you gonna have a voice when you get older. Woo woo. I'm thinking I was gonna be singing, but one day, um, I signed up for poetry, and we had to go perform at, like, different cities. Yeah. And one day, I turned one of my poems into a song, and it was going. Like, it was going hard. I'm like, did I just make a song, or is this a poem? And I showed it to my teacher, and she was like, that can be a song. But as far as we're concerned, it's a poem. So I kept doing it. And, like, eventually, I just started, like, making songs about my life. And ever since then, I just ran with it. What makes you different than other artists from Sacramento? Um, a lot. Because everybody wants to rap like the next person. Everybody wants to sound like the next person that they see going up. Every time somebody hears me rap, they've never heard that flow. I don't sound like nobody else. My vocabulary is very particular. Like, I don't sound like nobody originally. I got my own style. Like... I'm separated from everybody that's in Sacramento if you want to get technical. Like, and what was that process for you? It's like, finding your own sound and you are right because I feel like that is the thing California in general at the moment, whatever's hot, whatever's popping, everybody seems to like kind of mimic that type of sound. Yeah. What, what made you just want to stand outside the box do your own thing? Um, well, because... Before I even got to paying attention to the California scene with the music, I never paid attention to anybody else's music. I always wanted to work on how I sounded. I didn't care about how I sounded to everyone else. I wanted to make sure I sounded right. And my brother, Bozy, um, we call him Bo, he was rapping. And him and his partner almost got a, um, a record deal. But his partner died. So... He stopped doing music like he gave up with the music completely and he could have been one of them ones. So me and my brother, we've never sounded like anybody in life. We always had our own thing. It just naturally came to us. Yeah. Do you still do poetry to this day or like is that is that something you, you kind of stopped or? Um, nah, I stopped because it seems like the poetry's in me now with my music. Yeah. <laughs> like you I don't listen you. to my music and be like, okay, yeah, he know what he's talking about. All right. <laughs> The name Shuggy Bo. How did that come out? How did you come up with that? Oh, cause um, my nickname is Shug. So my, you, like Shug Knight. Yeah, like Shug Knight. But, <laughs> okay. Yeah, but my mom gave me that name though. Like since I was like a baby, and for, it was like for Sugar Pie and Sugar Bear and stuff like that. But as I got older, and people used to call me Shug. Females, you know how females start flirting with you when you get older. So it's turned into Shuggy or. Um, sugar doshes or like females just started coming up with hella little. <laughs> you feel me yeah. for sugar? Yeah. And um, my brother's name is Bo, so I was like, all right, since I'm like the little rapper version of my older brother, I was like, let me put a uh, sugar Bo, and I was like, okay, sugar Bo, yeah, I'm finna go with that and see how that goes. Yeah. And it it, it stuck <laughs> for sure. As far as like the people around you, like friends, uh, family. What was their reaction to you getting into music and starting to, like, want to be an artist? Did they support it? Did they not? Like, what was that like? Uh, my mom, um, like I told you earlier, she seen it from when I was only seven that I was going to do something with music. She just didn't know exactly what. Right. So she automatically supported it. She had my support from Jump. Uh, my dad, um, I wasn't really talking about it like that. Like I said, uh, they was into it a lot. So, me and my dad fell out for, like, hella long. So, for a long-ass time, he didn't even know I was doing music. So, I wasn't really worried about his opinion. Um, my older brother, he was proud as hell <laughs> that I started rapping because he's like, okay, look at my little brother taking after me. And, yeah, so everybody, um, I had everybody's support from Mom Jump. Nah, I rock with that for sure. Uh, can you talk about, uh, you can say what you want to say, like, um, uh, it's a lot of, like, politics, game-making in Sacramento. Is that something you ever got into? If you did it, how'd you stay out of it? 
Um, I, I'm gonna say it like this. I low-key got, like, dragged into it. Like, I didn't really have a choice because of who I grew up with. Yeah, I'm from North Hollands, but I grew up with a lot of the South people. Like, I went to Jackman. I went to Florin High School. Um, I lived on Mac Road. Yeah. Um, you feel me? I, I know everybody from the South. So, in Sacramento, whoever you hang with is who you reside with. Yeah. So, without me having a choice, a park nigga started fucking with me. And, yeah, I, I just started getting into it with them niggas and, boom, you in the politics. <laughs> But um, originally, I always told niggas I was from North Hollands, but they didn't. They wasn't hearing none of that. So I'm like, all right, bro, fuck it. So, but, but you are from North Hollands, but yeah. because you was with niggas from South Sac, you yeah. kind of got thrown into... South Sac is my stomping grounds. That's my second home. Got you, got so, you, got So you feel you. me? Ain't nobody finna punk me and be like, oh, you hang with them. So we finna, all right, bro, I guess we finna fade about it or whatever the case is because, nigga, that's who I grew up with. What you want me to do? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. That's, it's fucked up. Did, is that hey. <laughs> it's life at this point? <laughs> nah, nah, because it, it like when you say it, it's like, well, and I know like that's just how it be out there, but like from the outside perspective, I'm like, damn, like you that just them just your people, like you feel me? Yeah, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be to that extent, yeah, but, but it, it got to that extent, like, like this is what happened. Like, I swear to god, I went to a party one day and um, it was on 47th. And me and my homie, well, me and my old homies, uh, went up to that party, and then uh, we knocked on the door. Uh, they cut the music off. It got dead quiet, and they was like, "Who's that at the door?" They said, "Oh, that's Justice Juju." And then somebody said, "Shug," and then somebody in the house was like, "Shug," and then it was like, "Shug for Wooty Whoop," and I was like, "Okay, I know where this is going." And bro, when I tell you, man, the whole house came out. And we damn near had to squabble a house full of niggas just because of just because of me. I was about to say, that's not like just because of me, and I didn't have a choice because I wasn't running. So I'm like, all right, bro. Like I don't know what y'all want me to do. Like, but um, ever since that day, ever since they did what they did to me, yeah, it was it was on site with niggas because yeah. I'm like, y'all not about to keep no. I feel you. I feel you for sure. Uh, is that something that you wish you didn't get into or? I really wish I didn't. I I say it all the time. I really wish I didn't. But um, it was the it was the younger me at that time. So I'm like, bro, these niggas don't like me anyways. So fuck it. Why not? It was one of those things. Yeah. But that shit's so watered down right now. It, I don't it, be it, worried it, about it, that. It was sense. It's watered down to a sense like honestly. Banging in sack is watered down, period, because niggas is snitching, niggas is doing hella and they still coming around the hood. Like, this this is one thing I always said about sack. I really wish um sack uh programmed like LA, cause LA niggas don't play that. Nigga, if you do some embarrassing ass shit, bro, you're getting put off. You can't come to the hood, you can't do nothing. Right. But in sack. Oh, yep, that nigga just told on whoop de whoop 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 whoop. He just got out, but he finna come back to the hood, though. Like, what? Like, nah, it's not good like that. What, 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 what changed? Or, like, what? It is just, it's just, all, like, you think it, people, like, why, did, in your opinion, why did it change? Because um, people are glorifying a new, a new rule now. It's like, it's okay to backdoor your partners. It's okay to fuck with your partner's bitches it's okay it's okay to do the most out-of-pocket ass shit and still be around and this is mostly with niggas that's banging in sack yeah so it's like but when uh, last time i checked if you banging nigga, you're supposed to be a unity nigga you're supposed to be your brothers you're supposed to be your peoples but y'all niggas sitting over here taking niggas poles like oh he's not using it nigga that's me or nigga um i don't know him like that so i'm gonna go fuck with his bitch and I've never been able to get down like that. That's why I lost all my friends because they thought they was going to play with me like that. And we ended up running fades multiple times. And I showed niggas like, I'm not, I'm not the niggas that y'all hang out with. So I just can never get with it. Yeah. It's watered down for real. Nah, I get you. I get you on that for sure. Uh, it, it It is crazy that like, for me, like hearing your story, you originally, you how you moved a sack and then like, 
even been, being in that environment, it, it like changed you in a sense. You had to adjust completely to the whole to the new environment. Yeah, it's fucked up. I was like, I was innocent as fuck, but but Zach changed the fuck out of me. It didn't change me. I ain't gonna say I ain't gonna say it changed me. It built me. It built me to be the man I am today. Yeah. Because if I didn't go through what I went through, who would I be right now? Yeah. What is the meaning behind Glock stepping? It's G Lug. <laughs> G Lug stepping. Excuse me. G Lug stepping. My fault. Uh, G Lug stepping. Um, that's my brother. Um, G Lug. He was he was part of Splash Money. Um, he's originally from out here. He was um rolling twenties crib. Yeah. And um. He's technically my um. He's technically my um brother in law because I ended up having a daughter, and. My baby mama is his cousin. So, with him um, passing away recently, it turned into a uh, G-Log stepping because the way he was stepping and standing on business, nobody was stepping like him. Nobody was stepping like us. And when he died, everybody wanted to like act like they were so sad, but nobody was doing shit about it or nothing about it. I was the only one stepping about it. So, the whole G-Log stepping came from, if you're not stepping like him, then you're not G-Log stepping. Straight up, I got you on that. Yeah. <clears throat> why, why, why do you feel that people like that they they don't be standing on business like like they they say they will or they they just, they just end up not doing it? Um, here's the thing. Um, people like to ride waves. They see that somebody passed or they see somebody died, and they like, all right, bro, let me rep the hell out his name or. Let me chase this little cloud. Let me act like I know this person or was really close to this person. It's really sick, if you ask me. But with him, I didn't play that because everybody was damn near against him. Everybody was against us. So I'm the one that helped him get his first job. When niggas kicked him out the house, he was living with me. Like, his own family wasn't fucking with him. So the fact that I took him in and we was rocking like that, I didn't play about him. And when he passed... And everybody tried to act like they was rocking. I wasn't playing about it. Because y'all not about to sit here and act like y'all sad and y'all not. Yeah. Do you feel that North Highlands is like the most slept on neighborhood in Sacramento? Or what's your opinion on that? Oh, no, it is. <laughs> you know how slept on it is? It's so slept on that people swear up and down there's no bloods in North Highlands. <laughs> because I'm the main nigga that be saying blood this, blood that. Yeah. And my hood is ran by Crips, um, NHGC, North Highland Gangster Crips. So the fact that I'm out here hollering blood this and blood that, they like, nigga, we ain't never heard of no bloods in North Highlands. Yeah. And I've got into it with a couple of niggas for trying to say I wasn't the blood from North Highlands. So it's like uh, niggas used to always try to um, think that they knew what they was talking about. But... The reason why people don't know is because we don't got hella rappers. Yeah. So, it's me rapping, NHD Money rapping, ABK Download, and Act Out Zay. Yeah. So, Act Out Zay and um, D Money, they um, they some bloods from North Highlands. They whole little click is bloods. Yeah. But I'm not part of that shit. I, I do my own shit. I'm strictly 6'4". Yeah. So, for a long time, there was no bloods in North Highlands. So, that's what people kept on thinking until they heard me start rapping. And, and like, is it, is it like, uh, is it known for me like more than Crip area or like, um, is, or like what, why, why, the, what, is, what is the confusion on their side? The confusion on our side is that we're not talked about <laughs> like at all. <laughs> like you got, cause like, you know, you got Lavish D, uh, that's out of South Sad. You got Mozzie that's out of Oak Park. Yeah. Uh, you got D Steve that's out of the Heights. Yeah. Who's out of North Highlands? Yeah, I guess so. What you're yeah. So they like, okay, who the fuck are y'all? Yeah. <laughs> so you feel me? That's why I'm I'm putting on for the hood. Cause I got I low-key got the spotlight on me in Sacramento right now. So you feel me? I'm gonna do whatever I gotta do to get the spotlight on the hood because we need to be heard too. Yeah. In, in, in what ways do you feel like you, you can get the spotlight on the hood, music wise and outside of music? Hey, just like how I'm doing now, I didn't brought my ass all the way to LA yeah. for this interview and we doing all that. Um just like how I'm doing these ciphers, um, these interviews. I just did a, a 
a street vlog in uh, North Hollands. Yeah. And talked about like what I experienced and what I grew up with and what I had to deal with and all that good stuff. Yeah. So that's how I'm getting everybody know right now. How has uh, the ciphers been for you? Like, how, what has that experience been like? I well, I just started doing ciphers this year, like literally. Um, the ciphers been going crazy. Every time I do a cipher with somebody, they want me to come back to the next one. Yeah. So it's like um, I've been jumping on those like crazy. And what's like the process for you, like preparing for a cipher? Uh, I just be ready, honestly. Um, I write my verse and. Yep. Um. All right. Let's go. <laughs> I'm actually in the process that you like. My goal for this year is to drop like my first innovator cipher for sure. Hey, if you about to do a cipher, <laughs> let me you, know because I'm coming. I'm telling you, that, 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 that's gonna happen for sure. This, hopefully, before the end of this year, for sure. Oh yeah, definitely. Let me know on that one because that's gonna be nice. <laughs> I got you for sure. Um, can you talk about like what's your studio process like? Uh, my studio process. Yeah. Um, when I go to the studio, I really do a whole lot of one takes because people like to go to the studio and be like, oh, I got this song halfway done. Let me uh, write the rest of it. No, I'm sliding. I'm already done. Bro, put me in the booth. <laughs> I can get three, four songs done in two hours or one hour. Depending yeah, because everything's written. Everything's prepared. Yeah. And nine times out of 10, I got to memorize. So I don't got to look For at real? anything. Damn. How the fuck you, mem- you, how the fuck you <laughs> memorize the whole verse? Because you know how when you're writing your uh you writing your song, right? And you say it over and over? Yeah. I accidentally remember my music sometimes. Damn. So I just be like, oh shit, I remember so, that. I feel like that would in turn <laughs> uh make it cuz you know like when sometimes when you record it it sounds you could be like a, a step slow or a step off cuz you're reading. Yeah. But when you say it on memory, you're not looking at shit. I think I feel like it flow like it would yeah. be naturally just more like perfect with the beat. Yeah, it's hella more better when you're not reading because once you know you know what you're talking about, you can play around with it. You can put some character into what you're saying. Yeah. You feel me? So it's like having your um having your stuff memorized is way better than going in the booth and reading off your phone or reading off the uh book or anything like that. Because I'm going to let y'all know right now, I can't freestyle for shit. <laughs> yeah. Not a damn thing. So nine times out of ten, if I'm spending something, I wrote it. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I ain't got no, a good ass memory. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, for you, like, what is your goals? How far do you see yourself taking this music? How far do you want to take the music? Is it a, a is it something? Is it an aspiration of yours to be the biggest rapper out of Sacramento? Do you just want to take care of your family? What 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 is the goal for you? Um, honestly, I w- it would be nice. To it would be nice to be one of those um, top rappers in North Carolina, but that's going that's going to take some work, and I know it's going to take some work, which I'm not tripping off doing because I'm willing to do the work. But um, really, I just hope I get because I want to be like don't get me wrong, Thizzler is cool and all that stuff, but like I want to be bigger than Thizzler. Like I want to be with Drake and them. <laughs> I probably should have said him because he's not a good example right now. But you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> like I want to be like I want to no, be I, like I know what you mean. Yeah, I want to be with Chris Brown and all of them. I'm trying to be in the industry for real. Yeah. So it's like my goal is to get signed for real because the way I my music is just it's him. Like I gotta I gotta make it there. I have to. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I, I get you. Um, as far as like currently with being an independent artist and uh going through the, the the ups and downs of that what are some what is some advice you could give to someone else that wants to get into making music with some of the experiences that you've had um some advice with the music okay i'm not knocking anybody for this please do not uh use band lab or no shit like that for the beginning part of your career you can use it to practice and you feel me, see how it sounds, but do not drop no songs that you only made on band lab. Because that's what I did. I was I was a band lab nigga for a second. And my partner Gilo, he's the reason why I ever stepped foot in the studio for the first time. And that was at uh, Guaranteed Music. That's up in Sacramento. It was downtown. Yeah. Everybody was flying through there. It was to the point where niggas could barely even get a session. <laughs> that booked. Yeah, so... You feel me? Um, go to an actual studio. If you're going to go be doing songs in the studio, come already ready. 
Like, I'm not even a producer, but I know producers be mad as fuck, like, waiting on this nigga. Like, I know y'all still getting paid, but nigga, hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's like, you feel me? Come in, do your shit, and yeah, um, I would say stay out the bullshit, but bullshit finds people, so I don't know. Stay out the bullshit as best as you can. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I will say. I think that I think that's about as best we can do in this new era because yeah. even if you don't be a bullshit, it could just somehow make its way to your plate. And you like, oh, bro. my nigga. <laughs> like, you won't, you won't have a choice. You won't even see it coming. It's just there. Can you talk about a crazy life experience that you've had that you feel comfortable sharing? Okay, the term in crazy life uh, experience because I've been through some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that, that you feel is uh, okay for the camera? Um, I don't know. I think, the, I don't know, crazy. I don't know. I've done some shit. <laughs> but I don't know. Honestly, I, I could talk about it because it already happened. <laughs> Um, I ain't gonna lie. The craziest shit I've done is, um, chase a motherfucker. Like, okay, um, I popped into somebody's job, right? Because I need to fade. Yeah. And he wasn't trying to fight me. <laughs> popped up to a nigga's job for yeah. a fade and he wasn't trying to fight. Yeah, and, um, I, and that's the thing. I sat at the light rail and I waited for him to come. <laughs> and he seen me and he ran to the light rail and he jumped on the light rail and my partner followed after him. To make sure he didn't like get away and i sat and i got in the car and i was like literally um going to each light road stop to see if he got off to catch him and i couldn't catch him and somebody told me uh he ran all the way to valley high and i had to go get him over there so it's like i had to um i was really sending the car driving all around the city just to catch one person and did you catch him or? Yeah, I caught him. <laughs> but <laughs> but the reason why I say it was crazy because I was so mad that day. I was just sitting there like running uh, red lights, running stop signs. Like, I, I don't know where my mind went that day. I was just on some whole other shit. And yeah. <laughs> I, I, I want to ask, but you might have to tell me off camera. <laughs> what the fuck did he do to make you that bad? <laughs> What did he do to make you that bad, bro? To um, make you that bad. Okay, what did he do? That's what he did. Um, <laughs> but this nigga, um, he told me to come get my uh, stuff from his house because um, I was living with him at the time, but he pulled some blade shit. So I left, and uh, my clothes were still there. And then after that, he was like, um, come get your shit. Woo, woo. I was like, all right, I'm going to come get it tomorrow. And bro was like, nah, come get your shit now. Or I'm throwing it outside. Uh, and I'm like, I look at this nigga, I'm like, bro, if you throw my shit outside, I'm beating your ass. And he thought I was playing. And he was like, bro, I said what I said, come get your shit. I was like, and I said what I said. And he hung up. And I called his sister like an hour later and was like, hey, is my shit outside? And then she was like, uh, let me go check. And then she was like, nah, it's not outside. I was like, okay, cool. And then she called me back five minutes later. She was like, oh, wait, nope, never mind. Your shit's outside in the rain. And then Damn. he brought my shit back in the house and gave half of my clothes to some other nigga. Wait, and I was to like, give or to hold on? No, to, to get like he gave my shit he away. Gave your clothes away. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, I, I didn't even say nothing. I just popped up. I was mad as hell. And then he ran. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that's pretty fucked up. I feel like if, if you move like that, to move that way, you damn near what should be expected, like, a nigga coming, coming for you, for sure. Yeah, but that's what I mean by when I say niggas think shit like that is cool to, like, pull weird-ass shit, and I was showing niggas that hey, you're not going to pull that shit with me. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying, for sure. Because everybody tried to look at me crazy after I fought him. Oh, they thought that you was, like, the bad guy? Yeah, but he wasn't telling nobody what he did. <laughs> And he so, was just saying that you. <laughs> yeah, like he was like, no, bro, get this nigga. He tripping. Like, nah, bro. Tell them like niggas you what crazy. you did. Like, <laughs> that's crazy. crazy. <laughs> like, that's what. Um, that's yeah. It, it's crazy. It's crazy. Man, that is a crazy story. <laughs> I will give you that for sure. Uh, do you feel that the sack music scene would be as big as it is today without the politics? Or do you feel like it wouldn't? 
Like, when I say that, I mean, like, uh, for example, a rapper can drop a song. You can not know who a rapper is. Yeah. They can drop a song tomorrow, dissing some people, and they'll go the fuck up. Now everybody's tuned in with them. I necessarily don't think that's always the best way to get your notoriety because it's not. now people are expected. <laughs> people might only look at you as a diss rapper. And two, you know, I, I, I'm a firm believer if that's not always the, the fame you want on this and now you're just like putting this diss rap character. And like, it can work for like a year or two, but like yeah. once niggas are tired of hearing you diss, whoever you dissing. They're like, all right, what you going to talk about next? Exactly. <laughs> and then when, when you start talking about other shit, do they really give a fuck? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, um, honestly, without the politicking and the game banging and all the dumb shit, man, SAC would go up because we're so divided right now because of the politics. Like, there's way too many good-ass motherfucking rappers in SAC to not be collabing with each other because of some niggas we don't fuck with. Yeah. They have nothing to do with the music, but... I'm not doing a song with this nigga because he fuck with them niggas. Like, you got to really pick and choose wisely who you're going to do songs with. And that's the only way you're going to go up. But it seems like in Sacramento, it seems like um, you have to gangbang. You have to uh, make diss songs and shit like that just to even get some attention. Do you do you feel that's good? That's I don't. Not. I feel yeah. like it's fucked up. It's, it's very fucked up. That's why um, artists is like me it takes more for me. I have to. I have to go outside of my city to like get known. The main. I ain't gonna, I'm gonna keep it G. The main reason why motherfuckers is listening to me now is because oh they see I be on Thizzler. Oh they see I'm performing in Fresno and Vallejo and Oakland. Yeah. I'm going outside of my city to get heard because the motherfuckers in my city want to hear some stupid shit. Yeah. So it, it's just fucked up. Because me, I can really rap. I can run laps around half of the niggas that's popping in my city right now. But that's another story. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you was a part of the group um, called Splash Buddy. What what happened with that? <laughs> Splash Money, bro. I swear to God. <laughs> um, Splash Money, uh, they was a group. Originally, the niggas was basketball players. Apparently. Because, well, not apparently, they was. I didn't know that until they told me. But I used to be a part of that group, and you feel me? It was all for the music. And uh, G Lo, he's the reason why I even like became Splash Money in the first place. Because it was like, oh, um, we basically grew up with this nigga, should, uh, should be doing his sh- sh- shit with the music. Uh, why not put him on? Um, they was known for throwing big ass house parties and shit. So. When I got on, it was kind of like a little bit of a, um, a leverage because, you know, the clout was already there. I just had to, like, m- turn into music clout. Yeah. And that's what I was on. I was making music and, you feel me, getting people know. Didn't nobody ever hear about Splash Money until I started claiming it. Yeah. And people say that till this very day. We would have never knew about them if it wasn't for you. So I'm sitting here trying to do the music and shit. And these niggas over here starting shit with the motherfuckers I grew up with. <laughs> what? The uh, the South niggas. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's to a point where niggas is like, bro, Shug, why are you hanging out with these weird ass niggas? They doing X, Y, and Z. So, I'm like, bro, I don't know, but these are my niggas. Like, I'm going to stand. Like, that, that was my problem back then, too. I was so big on loyalty. Like, I didn't give a fuck about what nobody was talking about. These are my people. I'm standing behind them. And I really wish I didn't stand behind them the way I did because it didn't get me nowhere. And it ended up with me fucking with them niggas because um, they was trying to uh, do some blade shit and I wasn't fucking with it. And I told them niggas I'm not being part of Splash Money no more. And they started sneak dissing. And then uh, when I started approaching niggas about the sneak dissing, they tried to like like play it off. Like, no, nah, we didn't mean it like that. But you meant it like that. And yeah. It became an issue. And then I really stopped fucking with them niggas when uh, everybody found out we was beefing. And uh, I ain't going to say who, but somebody sent me a video of somebody doing, like, niggas was sending weird videos to and shit. And, yeah, I wasn't fucking with it because y'all got me fucked up because that looks bad on me because I'm with y'all niggas or was with y'all niggas. So... I stopped fucking with them because of that. Niggas was telling and all types of shit. 
Damn. I got yeah. you. And I, I just never could get with it. Never. I got you for sure. <laughs> but it, it is fucked up that it was like uh, dividing you for the niggas you grew up with. That shit, that for sure could be tough for sure. Uh, can you talk about uh, your product that you dropped, uh, Welcome to the Lands? Uh, what was the mindset for the project? Uh, what was the process putting the project together? Um, the process for the album of that is because um, since, like I said, since I um, since I got the spotlight right now in Sacramento, when I say lands, people don't know what lands is. So I know Welcome to the Lands will bring people attention. And since everybody knows I'm from Highlands, and lands is the last letters of the word Highlands, they're going to put two and two together and be like, okay, that's the lands. But um, I really came up with that because, like I said, everybody don't know about North Highlands. So... Since y'all don't know, let me welcome y'all in. It's one. Of, it was one of those type of albums, and I got a few people that's from the hood on that album. Yeah. So like, I'm still uh, shining spotlight to everybody else in the same sentence of me getting my spotlight myself. So when I did that album, I made like eight new songs. I got um this this producer hit me up. His name is Dex. Um. He go crazy. Um, that's like my main producer right now. I'm fucking with him. I got a couple more. Actually, I got a, like a six package deal. I got to do with this nigga. He go crazy as fuck. Yeah. And yeah, I tapped in with him, and then a couple of um cover art people tapped in with me because they heard my music and they was like, "All right, your music go crazy. Let me do a cover for you." So like, people was genuinely fucking with me to get my album the way it was. Yeah. And um. I wasn't supposed to drop the album until the Dizzler Cipher dropped, but we're still uh, we're still in the works with that. Um, I guess we still got to get the video edited and stuff. So since we didn't drop that first, I dropped the album first. Yeah, and yeah, that's how that came about. Also, see, so you did uh, Sacramento. Uh, I think it's Sacramento Street Wars. Yeah, how was that? Um, that went good too. A lot of the Crips from my hood is mad. <laughs> wow. I don't know. Because, um, bro, they're being difficult. I swear to God. Because they're so used to being just Crips in North Highlands, and that's it. Niggas in the comments, I'm also, bro, there's no bloods in North Highlands. I don't care. Woo, woo. I'm like, bro, I said what I said, bro. If y'all niggas really got a problem with me like that, then, nigga, y'all gonna have to, like, see me when y'all see me. Because I'm not, y'all not gonna keep here sit and tell me. You're not a blood from North Highlands, or there is no blood from North Highlands, but I'm the main fucking example. So, I'm just trying, like, <laughs> bro, I'm telling you, what, it'd be crazy. Why, I, I, <laughs> not my, I like, I think my question is like, not, I guess, why does it matter so much, or like, why, why are they so like, it can't be like, you feel me, like, you right there? I don't know. I, I feel like it's a um. I don't know what it was. Like because I, thing? Yeah, because okay. I, I kept it hella respectful. You feel me? I said, yeah, there's bloods in North Highlands, but the Crips is the biggest, uh, the biggest clique. There's no, there's nothing bigger than the Crips. And I gave y'all niggas, this, I fuck with my Crips in North Highlands. I got hella Crip partners from uh, North Highlands. That's why I'm like, bro, what is y'all tripping about? You know I'm saying? Not like you disrespecting them? Yeah, I didn't disrespect y'all niggas. So like, what's the issue? But you know, it, it's, it's social media. Like, it's the comments. Niggas live for the comments. Yeah. So it's just like, all right, bro, y'all going to talk the shit y'all talking, but yeah, let's not forget who's the one doing the fucking interview right now <laughs> at, um, in Sacramento. Like, I don't know. What can the people expect next from you? Um, Expect a lot. Um, I got another album in the works. It's called uh, 64 Reasons. Um, I'm going to, I'm actually going to reach out to like different cities and have different artists on that album. It's going to be bigger than the first one. Um, people still need to be on the lookout for the Dizzler Cypher because that's going to drop soon. Hopefully, um, hopefully this week or next because we shot that shit like a month ago. Yeah. We should have been dropped it. But yeah, um, that's still in the works. And um, I might be performing in uh, Fresno. I might be opening up for uh, Kapala 304 and yeah. uh, Verdi Baby. Yeah. And yeah, I got show. a lot of stuff still coming up in the works. Now that that would be a good show for sure. Yeah. Um, is there anything that we we didn't discuss that you want to talk about before you get up out of here? Um, 
not that I know of, uh, yeah, not that I know of, um, anything, if anything, I'm going, like, you feel me, give me the shout outs, <laughs> you feel me, shout out, uh, shout out my hood, shout out my mama, I mean, shout out my dad, I mean, sure, he the reason why I'm here, <laughs> yeah, um, I shout out to everybody that supported me, that's fucking with me, that's been fucking with me, and not just now fucking with me, but all support is good support, shout out to everybody, uh, shout out my nigga down low, D money, um, my nigga, uh, boo, free boo, and yeah, shout out to everybody, like, that's pushing the six motion and doing what they gotta do for the hood, and we gonna be young. Nah, for sure, uh, I appreciate you pulling up, uh, can you give your Instagram one more time so I know where to follow you at? Yep, um, G Log Steppin, um, G L O C C S T E P P I N underscore Shuggy Bo, S H U G G Y B O six five. We got Shuggy Bo in the building, North Highlands in the building. You already know you locked in with the innovators. We got the best interviews. I appreciate you pulling up. Dope interview on the way for sure. Yep, appreciate you. A blessing to be here.